I recently bought an Akia here in Japan and today I'm going to go through the purchase costs and the amount of money I spent renovating the property. I'll also talk about overcoming all of the challenges I had along the way. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chaney and I moved to Japan on a working visa 11 months ago. If you want to know more about why I moved to Japan, please check out my video called Why Japan. The property I purchased is about an 8 minute walk to the closest JR station and there's easy access to Osaka and also the Kansai airport. The city is on the coastline so there's some beautiful sights around and the town is large enough to be able to find work. So for the purchase of the house I had budgeted 20,000 Australian dollars. I signed the contract, paid cash and I had a three week settlement. If you watch my other video, you'll know that this is where things didn't go so well and I found a number of issues, especially with the water pipes. I'll go into that later. Here is the floor plan and you can see right at the front of the house there was this unused room. And this is the room that I converted into a garage and that was the first renovation I needed to do before moving in because I had a car and I needed to park it somewhere. Talking to local people, I found out that this property has been an akia or a vacant property for a very long time and this front room used to be used as a hair salon. With the new garage door complete, I added some ramps and now I can just drive my car in and out. The new garage door made a world of difference to the appearance of the front of the house so then I went about fixing all the other things that looked a bit old and tired like the pole, the light the intercom and the letterbox. Some of the smaller things I could do myself and the other things that were a bit more tricky I asked the handyman. What do you think of this before and after? What a difference the door has made. This house did not have much street appeal so I understand why it was left on the shelf. A few of my neighbours walking past have told me how happy they are to see the house having a second lease of life. I changed out the old lights and I also added this new intercom Wi-Fi camera system. This has been such a saviour when I'm at work when I get parcels delivered or just checking who's at the door before I answer. Amazon Prime has been my go-to for all these cute little finds for the house. After I purchased the property I was finally able to call the Wakayama Council and get the water turned on and it was only then that I discovered there was a water leak under the house. So while I was waiting to find a solution to that problem I started working on the outside of the house doing things like gardening. The next job I set about doing was evening out all the concrete. It was chipped away in some parts and there were lots of parts where water was pooling and I wanted to fix this problem. All of this was happening in the midst of Japan's heat wave and we were having days with 90% humidity. So yeah, it was tough going and it was still very stressful because at that time I didn't know what the solution to the pipes was going to be. I became good friends with the people at my local Conan hardware store. It's amazing, you can practically buy anything you need to renovate a house. I decided the best option would be to lay down some fake grass. It was the only way to cover all the motley concrete here and there and everywhere. I bought a new garden hose and replaced the pump for the septic system. I found there was a few cracks throughout the house so I bought some caulking in the exact same colour as the house paint and I went around and filled all these cracks in. The next thing I had to deal with was the awning out the back, it really made the place look like a shanty town. For this I had to borrow the K truck from my local hardware shop to bring sticks of timber home and I painted every stick of timber one by one and then got some help to put these up. I put in an outside light, painted the back gate, and I feel like now it's an area that I could possibly use when friends come over and we could do barbecues outside. What do you think? It's probably a bit better than what was there before. This is the view from my upstairs office. This is probably the only room I haven't had to do anything to, so it's sort of one of my favourite rooms in the house. 
It also has a veranda and I hang my laundry out here. found out from the plumber that the bathroom would be about a three week wait so I got to fumigating the house and I also ordered air conditioning because it was stinking hot at this time. I set off these fumigation bombs in every room of the house and I let the house sit for two days before coming back and vacuuming up any bugs that I found. I ordered the air conditioning off a company called Rakuten and the cost included delivery and installation. So I found that to be a really simple and cost effective process. I guess it was pretty lucky that there was already electrical socket and a hole where the air conditioner could go. So that saved on the installation costs. <laughs> Installation company was very kind and very tidy and taught me through the whole process as they went. There was nothing really wrong with the kitchen other than the pipes obviously and the fact it was really really dirty from not being used for a long time. I think it's scrubbed up all right and there's really no need to replace this kitchen, it's functioning perfectly fine. Okay, so on to the bathroom and this is where the handyman believed that all the leaks were happening. He discovered a couple of cracks in tiles and thought that perhaps if he pulled out all of the bathroom they'd find the leak, which in fact they did. It was there in the bathroom and there was also evidence of old termite damage because it was a wet area. I had always budgeted to do this bathroom. However, with the pipe issue, I was forced to do the bathroom a lot sooner than what I had planned. I was hoping to live in the property for a bit and make decisions on things like color scheme and functionality, but with the pipes issue, I couldn't move into the property until this was sorted. So it forced my hand and made me make some decisions a lot quicker than what I really wanted to. The handyman only had a small window of time where he could do the bathroom before he had another job starting. So I just had to go with whatever was in the catalogue and make decisions on the run. I was under pressure because I wanted to give notice for my apartment lease so I didn't have to keep paying rent. So this bathroom is the basic Toto bathroom in their standard grey and white colour scheme. I think it turned out all right and, and you can't go wrong with the colour scheme they have on the front page of their catalogue. So at the end of the day, I mean, I could have paid $1,000 for the building inspection, but obviously they wouldn't have found the water leaks because I couldn't turn the water on until the property had settled. And also uh, they may have found termites, which uh, we did find when we pulled the bathroom out. But again, would that have stopped me from buying the house? Definitely not, because I already had budgeted to replace the bathroom. The only thing that I guess really upset me was that I didn't have the time to take my time and make decisions slowly. I was sort of put under the pump because I really needed to stop paying rent. So I am gonna go into all of the renovation costs and the purchase costs and taxes at the end of the video. So I hope you can stick around till then. Even though it's a basic Toto bathroom, it still has a lot of the great features that I love about Japanese bathrooms. The plumber terminated all of the pipes and laid brand new pipes for both the hot and the cold water. The minute the builder gave me the start date for the bathroom, I was able to give notice to my apartment. The bathroom took exactly one week to complete and I'd given a month's notice to the landlord. I guess life throws these challenges at us every now and then and it's meant to test us and make us really appreciate what we do have in life and I certainly do appreciate every little inch of this bathroom. Then after moving in I looked at moving the laundry inside so as you know from my last video my laundry was actually outside and this is the final product. So I've got some great safety mechanisms here with the tap to stop it from bursting from the pipe. And there's also a floor drain and this great little lip that uh, the washing machine sits in. And this is what contains all the water should there be a water leak. 
As you probably guessed, Millie is a very important part of my life. So I wanted something in this house to be special for her. And she now has this cat wall. She can run amok. So on to the final figures and numbers. As you heard, I paid 20,000 Australian dollars for the house. Next came all of the agent fees, solicitor fees and taxes. These added up to around $3,800. About six months after purchase, I got the acquisition tax bill and that added up to around 800 Australian dollars. Then there was the renovation costs, so the cost of the bathroom and all of the other bits and pieces. And these added up to $15,000 in total. So the total amount that I spent to have a house in Japan and stop paying rent is 39,000 Australian dollars. At the end of the day, I asked myself, would I do it all over again? And the answer is a definite yes. I really love this house. I'm sure you have lots of questions and I haven't covered everything in this short video. So feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer as many of those questions as I can. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.